editorials, the phone lines, reports, reaction to the 15% foreign investors tax put on by the province of British Columbia. Uh, Ozzy, let me start with uh, what, what this tax is, if you can give it to me very quickly. Yeah, well, essentially, uh, any uh, per- uh, non-Canadian citizen or permanent res- resident will have to pay a 15 tax on all purchases in real estate. And so really, there's two tax. One, this is a new tax. You and I actually talked about it, that such a thing happened in, in Hong Kong, it happened in Singapore, and it had a major effect on the market. But the big thing the BC government did, it made it retroactive and thereby creating untold problems that are going to be, be descending on us. Yeah, let me go to that for a second. So, yeah, it's uh, even if you had entered into an agreement, say, in July, but the close date is in uh, August, you're subject to that tax. Exactly. Even if you had entered it into last January. I mean, sure, of the, course, the whole yeah. idea is that we, we just these, these people are, you know, totally caught in the middle. So either maybe you're, you're a buyer and hey, not all buyers that came from China or from uh, Iran, Iran or wherever uh, are very rich. They might have just bought a house for their student daughter here while they're studying at UBC or whatever the reasons are. Let's say you put down $60,000, you now have a firm contract. Now you have a choice. You either lose that 60000 deposit and maybe get sued by the owner, rightfully so, he has a contract, or you're going to pay an unconscionable, not an unconscionable, but a very large tax. I mean, the average house in Vancouver is a million five, so that extra tax is $225,000. Yeah, and if it's a single detach, can you please show me where that 1.5 million is? Because I'll buy it today. You know, as we both know <laughs> yeah. it's well exactly. over that. And uh, so, yeah, you're talking on a two million dollar residence, 300 grand. They may may walk, but let's say the sellers yeah. entered into agreement on the basis of that, they could be in real trouble. That's that's the key, Mike, and that's what when you look at any normal thinking industry professional they're not going off the wall we don't mind if we, we, we think the tax maybe have other reasons why it should not be put in but we understand the reason the government has to do something and maybe they should have done it sooner but to make it retroactive is to create untold problems let's we have an actually a case a, a, a chinese buyer bought paid nine hundred thousand dollars he had a sixty thousand deposit and now the owner went in Langley and he bought a, a bigger house and he has a $40,000 deposit there. Now, we're not sure, but we think the deal is two months old, that the owner in Langley likely also bought one. So if the first buyer from, from overseas does not complete, we have maybe two other deals in the line that also can't complete. I mean, the lawsuits, it's a heaven for lawyers. I mean, you know, everybody's going to say, well, he should have done that and they should have done that. The reality is that it's impossible to predict. Yeah, let me just ask, and of course... Let's say Vancouver does this, but, uh, you know, other municipalities don't follow suit. I mean, I, I suspect that you could see if there's an interest in moving money out of China in this case, you know, for safety's sake, out of the uh, out of the reach of the Chinese government or for diversification on that basis. I mean, I think we could see it go in other municipalities could certainly take advantage if they're not part of this. I'm thinking Victoria and Nanaimo. Uh, you know, if Toronto doesn't change, that could move money. And uh, for Calgary and Edmonton. Yeah, there's no doubt that that could be the case. I mean, right now it only applies to the Greater Vancouver area, which goes to Langley on the one side and West Vancouver on the other side. So you could argue I could go to Chilliwack or I could go to Whistler. Uh, I personally think that perhaps Victoria and Kelowna might be included in the tax. Definitely the taxes will be uh, laid out. They might be lower. It might be 10% for Victoria. I don't know. We, we're not sure. The key, though, is that this is... Uh, big, big money uh, income for the government. It's an election year, so it it seems kind of positive uh, (laughs) to do such a thing. But yes, the money will go also in commercial real estate because we don't, uh, these rules don't apply to the commercial real estate market. That's a great point, yeah. Uh, Let me just, you know, we hear all these numbers bandied about, you know, there's 5% foreign orders, 80%, 30, you know, whatever. What's your estimate or or how how to make better sense of those kind of numbers of the percentage of non-resident buyers? Well, that's the key, and uh, you hit the nail on the head. We have a lot of uh, percentages being quoted. Actually, when CMHC says 3.5% are foreign, what they mean is that 3.5% of the housing stock, the total housing stock, is owned by uh, uh, non, uh, non-residents. non If that's the case, it has nothing to do with the sales taking place the last six months. And when you go on the West side, uh, people will tell you that in the over $3 million range, it's 60% is offshore money. And if you go to Coquitlam, it might be uh, uh, 10%. So you can't sort of make a blanket statement. 
What I am concerned about is that this will set a precedent. I think a thinking speculator that used to come to Vancouver is going to say, hey, I don't mind taxes. I can think about it. But if they go retroactive, why on earth do I want to come? They will not come. We think they might go to Victoria or they might go commercial, but they won't come at all. And the, the person that just wants to keep speculating might see a big surprise. You and I talked on the show several times about the effect Hong Kong tax had. It crashed the land values. And yes. we told everybody on CKNW in February and in April that we, sh- we wouldn't be paying the kind of money that people are paying for the land because today's developer is going to look at that piece of land that's supposed to be rezoned to high rise and it's very expensive. But he says, hey, I don't know who's going to be buying those properties. If all those foreign buyers don't come, I'm not going to build. And so all of the unintended consequences, all these buyers may just hold off. They're not necessarily going into something else. And that's exactly what happened in Hong Kong or in Singapore. This, this to me is really a care, and we have talked about it before, but it is a case to be careful what you wish for, you know, in this case. You know, seven, uh, seven out of ten provinces in this country, real estate is the biggest component of their gross domestic product. Seven out of ten. It's not just Vancouver. You know, it's not just Toronto. Seven out of ten provinces. I really think we have to have a long ex- – I, I know where the government's responding, and I agree there's some politics. I mean, the, the normal – hue and cry, at least that the media reports on, as government should do something, is if their record of fixing prices has been good. I mean, look at the disastrous record of rent controls. It absolutely exacerbated that problem. So there should be a lot of reason to question this. And, and, and finally, I'll get your comment, Ozzy. This has nothing to do with affordability. The way we've mixed these super high prices with affordability, I've got a son in the market for over one year looking for a place. He sure as heck wasn't looking at the upper end of the market, you know, on Point Grey Road in Vancouver or in Shaughnessy in Vancouver. That's not his market. And the way we confuse this stuff is just bound to lead to some really bad policy. No question. And the retroactive tax, to me, it's taxation without representation. It's taxation without due process. It may be illegal, but really, there's only one word comes to mind when you hear due process. It should be fairness. We inherently know what's right and wrong. And if you ask the average Canadian, I'll say, look, a retroactive tax is simply wrong. If I'm a businessman right now, anywhere around the world, and I want to maybe spend $100 million to come into Vancouver, I'm going to say, gee, if they do that retroactively to the housing market, maybe they're going to do that. They give me all these rules to live by, and then, yeah. boom, out of nowhere, they're going to retroactive, go back a year, and I'm in a totally different world. You can't do that. The predictability of the province is gone. And the spin-off now, less Mercedes going to be sold, less BMW, less furniture, less all of those kind of, uh, it will have a marked impact on, on the market, and I do think it will affect ourselves in terms of values negatively. It will slow down the market, uh, no doubt about it. And plus, give me an example where governments could adjust prices. I still get this farcical kind of thought. I want to ask people who say the government's got to do something great. How far down do you want prices to go? Just give me the number. Is it 8%? Is it 18? Is it 34? Is it 1903 prices? It is absurd to suggest there is a dial that the, oh, the, the, the problem is that the government isn't just dialing it right. Truly, it is so profoundly silly, you know, to suspect that. And then the other side, very quickly, Ozzy, is, you know, we're talking about reducing the net wealth of people who are in homes, 1.5 million homes in the province of British Columbia, for example. You're, this is just applying to uh, the lower mainland. But again, uh, you know, you're talking about reducing the net wealth. I don't ever hear that talked about. Exactly, and I think that we must remember that a lot of the losses will be between Canadian buy- owners and Canadian buyers because I have a deal on my house, I go buy another one. It's normal. I have a legal contract. We have one lady that sold one house okay. at a million four, bought a house in Maple Ridge for 600 and a townhouse for her son. Now, all of a sudden, she has three legal contracts that are binding on her on both sides, and if the first one doesn't close and she doesn't have the money, she can't close on the others. You know, these unintended consequences will be serious. I would urge the government not to do it. McDonald's really just put out a, a great uh, plea to the government, and it, it, it said this is neither just nor reasonable, and I agree. Yeah, I think it should be grandfathered at the very least. Then another right. debate can take place. But as you say, the retroactive aspect of it is uh, punishing, and it's not fair. They, you know, people entered into agreements on the basis of the laws that exist Normally, you don't, you know, you grandfather stuff, say, well, no, that's okay, yeah, but from going it. this day on, yeah. If they uh, had said from July 25th, any contract, that's what it is, hey, I can now accordingly judge myself. Yeah, very quickly, we got time for one hot property. 
Yeah, we got the least expensive revenue triplex in Greater Vancouver, uh, Victoria rather, and it has $42,000 in gross income. It's on at 929000 And hey, if that offshore money goes to Victoria, <laughs> maybe that's a better deal than most. you got to love the taxes. Thanks, Ozzy. Thank you, Mike.